today we're going to go over the things that Dr. Turner emailed you, beginning with the new environment. I don't know if you've logged in lately, but you probably might not have recognized some things. So we're going to talk a little bit about the new layout. Typically, LiveTex does updates um, between semesters, so sometimes we come in thinking that we're, we know what we're doing and it looks totally different and it's especially aggravating when you've got your step-by-steps developed and then you realize that they no, no longer work because live text is a little different. But hopefully uh, today we can get you more familiar with the new look. When you log in to your live text, you see all of the assignments for your courses um, and the, the dates. Um, if you scroll down, depending on the number of classes that you're teaching and the number of assignments that you made, your screen may be pretty full. And then in the situation of those of you that don't use live text to actually teach your classes, you may only see one assignment, and that's the assignment that we have copied into all of the courses called the Dispositions uh, Assessment. And we're going to go over that today so you'll know how to use it and to assess your students. But you're going to see the different courses and all the assignments. It's more or less just an overview for you to see what's been assigned. I think it's, we think that we've got it going. Um, what's been assigned and the little graphs also tell you the red indicates um, those that have assignments that have not been submitted the yellow is the ones that have been submitted, but they're waiting for you to assess them. And then the green are those that have been submitted and you have completed assessing those. Uh, this is different from the way it was in the past. Typically, the assignments were listed in the order that you uh, were expecting them or the due dates. Today, in this new environment, you have two buttons that you can sort the assignments that are on your dashboard. One is alphabetical order and it defaults to that. And you see that my assignments are listed in alphabetical order. Okay. The other is to sort by submissions to assess. If you click on that as a, as a professor, what you're going to see is the assignments that are waiting to be assessed. So in this particular case, I have six ready to be assessed on this assignment, one here, and so on. But the, well, it's what it looks like. We've had a hard time figuring out just what their rhyme and reason was to that, but it does look like that is the case. Um, you also have two new buttons. If you looked at this as a professor and said, oh, I've got six assignments that need to be assessed, you can click on the assess and it'll take you straight to the assessment area in your course, okay? If you have assessed using a rubric, and this is a new feature, you've got a report function. Um, I'm gonna scoot down just a second. I know you may not have anything that you have assessed. I'm actually in um, Dr. Barnes, one of his classes. I'm going to go to this Prezi presentation that he has assessed eight people. And since I already know that he has a rubric that he uses in there, I'm going to click on the report so that I can just show you that no longer is it really necessary for you to be able to use the tool to run your own reports. You can just click on the report feature beside an assignment and if you have used a rubric in that assignment, you're going to get this report. Now the one thing, this is just like a quick view of what you have assessed. I can tell that there were some standards linked to a couple of different areas. But in this particular report, it's not going to bring up those standards. But it is, it is a quick way of looking at your assessment. And if you want to go back now to previous semesters, 
if you should want to look at any assessment that you've done, you can go back to other semesters and click on that assess um, or that report feature and it will, will show you that. Um, okay, one other thing that's different is where is your My Account button? Where is the feature to switch to student view? That has all been moved behind those three little dots to the right of your name. If you'll click on those three little dots, you'll see that you can switch to student version or student view. You can go into your My Account and you can also go in the Help button and see their step-by-steps and their videos and you can log out. Everybody should be a student in each of your classes. The reason we do that is so that you can look at student view. And I just want you to see that since I know everybody should be a student at this point. If you click on student view, um, the student view looks a whole lot different than your view does. So many times if you're trying to help a student and you're not sure what their screen looks like, you could switch over to student view and you can easily see what the student view looks like. And then we're gonna click back to faculty view. All right, again, this view is a great overview. What I like to do is click on the courses tab and it will show then a list of all of your courses and then you can specifically go into each course and you can add assignments or assess assignments based on what you want to do. So I want you to click on any one of your uh, uh, courses that's listed there. If you remember back to the days of the one-liners, remember we had rubrics for the one-liners? Some of us don't want to go back that far, but. We had those and we would share those and then ask you to create an assignment and link that rubric so that you could assess the students. Today, we're doing it different. We've got the dispositions rubric completed. We created an assignment called dispositions assessment and added that rubric to it. And then we copied that out to 1,312 courses. So each of your courses now has that assignment and that rubric and it's ready for you to assess when you get ready to do that this semester. So we're going to look at that. You're in one of your courses, if you click on assignments, if you teach or have other assignments in here you'll see multiple assignments. The one that I specifically want to key on today is this assignment called Dispositions Assessment Spring 2016. Okay, if you will click on that You'll see the assignment as it has been created in the course, and you're also going to be able to see what the students see. So let's look at this because you may be looking at this for the first time. It says, instructors will utilize the attached rubric to assess each student dispositions. Each student should be assessed in each course, each term. Okay. There's six, there's six rows, I mean there's 12 rows to this rubric. The second part, which is the last six rows of the rubric, and we're going to look at this in a second, may be utilized to assess dispositions at any point during matriculation, including courses prior to teacher candidate admission. The first part, the first six rows of the rubric, will be utilized as appropriate for assessment after admission to teacher education. Students should carefully review the rubric in order to understand the professional expectations of teacher education candidates and teacher educators. Mm -hmm. So this is viewable to the students and you might want to go over this with them or tell them to look at this because these are the expectations. It says students will not submit anything for this assignment. And I thought that was important to put in there so that when students look at that, they're thinking, what is it I'm supposed to submit? They don't submit anything. It says that they um, are to be assessed every semester in every course. So that's what the students are gonna see. If you scroll down, yes, the assignment is viewable to students and you might've even had questions on that at this point. 
um, the rubric has been attached. Students can click to view this rubric, and I want you to click view just so you can see what they see. If you click on view, scroll down, the rubric is at the bottom of the page, and this is what students will see. Uh, it tells them that the candidate dispositions are assessed at specific points during the program. They may be assessed at any time. Uh, it talks about the first six items of the rubric versus the second. Uh, the last six items um, and then if you look at candidate dispositions um, says the purpose of this assessment and explains to them uh, is to note essential dispositions and attitudes of as aspiring teachers or teacher education candidates who will use this it's going to be used by professors in the College of Ed and Arts and Sciences any clinical supervisors, cooperating teachers, and possibly others. The rubric itself, have you seen this rubric before? Anybody? Okay. Again, the rubric has 12 rows. The first six rows, again, are for those that have been admitted into teacher education. And notice it's broken down. It ranges from exceptional at four points all the way to unacceptable. We have um, the first row is leadership and collaboration, and you see the standards that it has been linked to uh, out of the 215, 2015 set, 1.6 and 1.7. So you'll probably want to spend some time and look over this at some point. So we have leadership and collaboration, effective facilitation, and again, you see all the, the standards that are linked, meaning we're collecting data on all these standards every time you use this. Uh, assessment and reflection, diverse learners, um, ethics and professional responsibility, and reflective mastery of content. So there's six rows that they could score possibly four points on. So that would be like 24 points for a perfect score on those top six. The last six, which can be used for any student, whether they're in, they're in teacher education or not, we only have two columns filled in. Uh, so the most you could score is gonna be in a three point column. And those six rows are communication, punctuality, professional boundaries, openness to improvement, self-regulation, and personal appearance and hygiene. So those are the, the 12 rows. The last six rows having a possible of 18 points. So in the end, 42 points is the most that a student could score on this. It's not set up to give a grade at per se, because a lot of times students look at it and see a 85 and they think it's not good and they want to know why there's not an A. So they don't see scores like that. They can see the total points, but once you evaluate it and submit it to them, the student will be able to see how they have been evaluated in the rubric. If you, uh huh. Um, I would assume all twelve. Communication or well, um, I'm, I would assume that you could, if you did not know and did not want to score, you could leave it blank. Or the last column, very last column, is NA, so you could certainly do that. Um, so. It, either one of those, I guess you could talk in your department and decide, you know, what you would prefer to do. Uh, sure. Okay. No, it's already there. I'm going to show you how to score it. Yes. I'll show you how to score it in just a second. Yes, it's already out there. It's in every one of your courses. 
It's just up to you at this point. Sometime during the semester, I think the due day on it is April 30th, which should be either the day of graduation or day after graduation. So it you know goes all through the, the entire semester. Yes, Jerry. I don't think it's ever been used before. That's right. <laughs> right. It, well, the thing that I wish sometimes it didn't even show total points because a lot of times they'll look at it and think they're being penalized when actually they're not. Um, if you leave, um, you know, some of them blank, it's just meaning it doesn't apply and you're not going to score that. So, yes. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're going to go show you how to do that in just one second. Okay, so now you have had your first look, I guess, at the entire rubric and the standards that are linked to it. Now, okay. Okay, so how now, now that you have this in your possession in every single course, how are you going to score it? Once you click on assignments, which that's the section we're in, in order to score something, you will click on submissions and grades. So if you would, go ahead and do that. And what you should see is all of the students in your class. Okay? And yourself. We're going to play with you scoring yourself just so that you can get a feel for how, how to score the rubric and how to make comments. So if you will click on your name, should be over in the left-hand column where it's awaiting assessment. If, um, I mean, it's awaiting submission. The reason it's awaiting is nobody has submitted anything and they won't submit anything. But we will, we will be able to score it as well. Go ahead and click on your name and click on the Assess button. Okay, this looks a lot different from our environment prior to this semester. Um, it still works very similar. It's sort, just sort of arranged differently. Over in the right-hand column, we have a place for grade. If you should want to assign a grade, whether it be letters or words, you can do that. If you want to say good job or A or whatever, but you don't have to. You do not have to put a grade there. You can put a comment if you have a comment to give to the student, not necessarily about the rubric because we're going to be able to comment, comment on every row of the rubric to give distinctive feedback on each row. A lot of times when I use rubrics, I put in this comment, please click on the rubric to view your assessment because I want the student to go look at the rubric and see exactly how they scored on each row and to look at the comment. So you could certainly make that comment here if you wanted to. You also have a little thumbnail of the rubric over on the right. The only, I guess, real thing I can say that that's good for is if, if I pull up a student and look and that has been populated, I know I've already scored that student. And I can certainly scroll down and see if it was in the first, the four points, the three points, whatever. But that's not what you would use to actually score. We want to expand the rubric. So you see the little expand rubrics? If you'll click on that, it's going to open the rubric in a new window. 
you're now in scoring mode. You're ready to start, to start scoring the student. And notice every row is going to have a comment button. Um, as you move across the row, you see your little check, meaning this is what you're going to check if you click here. If we click, it turns dark blue, and I have now selected the score for that first row. Uh, I haven't really tried it. I haven't. Tr you can do it both ways. Okay. Okay. Yes. And if you knew that you wanted to give them all fours or all threes, the only thing that you have to be careful on this rubric is giving them all fours is going to put fours in that bottom section, which is not really designed to score four. We've got a three and a one. So, um, you could check the first six fours and then the bottom six threes if you wanted to. But anyway, you click to score. If you want to do a comment, you see the little comment section over on the left, the little plus and the little comment. If you click on that, and in the past you may have waited for a little pop-up box, but at this point, the comment box is below that row. So you will need to if you want to comment on that row, um, you will need to click and just do regular word processing. Okay? And then you can continue to scroll down and score the student. If you would, go ahead and score yourself just to see how it works. Um, when you get to, or if you, if you scroll to the very bottom of the rubric, you're going to see what the total points are at this point. So if you have scored several of the, the rows, um, you're going to see a, a possible to, total 24 points. Now keep in mind, the option is left there that you can use the last six rows to score those that are not in teacher education. So there's no way they're going to score the 42 points if you're only going to score those six rows. So the student really, huh? Right, according to Dr. Turner's instructions, the last six rows can be used for students that have not been admitted yet to teacher education where the six, first six rows are designed for those students that have been admitted. Not to get in, it just can be, you know, for students that are trying to get in, you know, have applied to get in. So there's going to be situations where you might use the first six, you might use the last six, you might use all 12, right? Um, yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's just, it just means that, yeah, right, right. So they neither gain or lose points from it. Um, the only way they really lose points would be by scoring less than a four, I guess, and Okay, we're about to get there. Any questions on how to score it? Once you have scored it and you, you have added all of your comments, yes? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That, I would guess, you know, the, the well, all right, there's an NA at the top of that column, meaning that whole fifth column is not applicable. Uh, if somebody left one out, which it looks like they're all there. So 
I don't, what did you mean by there are two NAs? Okay. Okay. Well, this is still a work in progress. That's all I. Well, <laughs> and that's something you can d discuss with Dr. Turner. Uh, I. Uh, it may be that last column is in there by default and maybe when it was designed they didn't realize that and put the not applicable as zero points um but i do see what you're saying is that one of them actually does not give them credit for that the other one doesn't take away any credit from them so it's just something we'll have to work through um on our next run of this. Okay, once you have scored it, you're ready to close out of the rubric. And I know that's a little bit scary because you feel like you want to submit it while you're here, but you actually close out of the rubric once it's scored. And notice in your little thumbnail, it's obvious that you've already done the scoring. So we're now ready to submit the assignment. So back on the screen for the assignment, you see the submit assignment? If you'll go ahead and click submit assignment, and it's saying warning, um, mine has not been completed, which if you did do the first six rows or the last six rows, it's probably gonna give you that warning. But go ahead and tell it to continue anyway, and it will submit, and you'll see your name now appears in the right-hand column that the assessment has been completed. Okay? What if you change your mind or what if you want to redo it? If you go back and click on um, that, your name or that assignment, it's going to give you the ability as a professor to undo the assessment. If you click on, and let's go ahead and do that so our system won't have all of us in there with uh, rubric data. If you click on undo assessment, then your name is going to move back to one of the other columns, meaning you can rescore, can rescore that assessment at this point. Okay? Any question about that assignment? Again, the disposition assessment is in every one of your courses, or it should be. Anytime you want to play around with things, you can do it on you, yourself, um, and see how things work. And then you can click the student view in order to see how, how students are going to be able to view that. Yes. And you have, you can do that at any time through the end of April. Okay? And will this be the process going forward? Every, every term, will populate this rubric into the This rubric, rubric or the updated version of it, as you, you know. But that's not something we'll worry about. That's not something you'll worry about. No. Every semester, we will, based on feedback and any issues we might run into, we can adjust it and do a new assignment for, I guess it'll be fall, I don't know that we'll do them in the summer, and submit this, send that out, and you will continue. Yes? No, this, this is a new live text thing. When you 
actually evaluate a rubric, when you click on expand there, it's going to open it in a new window and you're going to have to score it, close it, and submit it. Yeah. Which, it did that basically the same way last semester except it opened it in a smaller window inside your environment. You could still see that you were in the assignment piece. So it wasn't, to me, as scary to click that close button because you didn't really know where you were going to end up. But you close it and then submit it and, and it's good. You've got that thumbnail there to let you see how, how you basically scored. Another thing that I might point out is if you should want to score several students at one time, let me scoot over to um, one of Jimmy's courses so that you can see this. If you have several students and you know that when you um, evaluate them, they're all going to get the same grade, all going to get fours and threes. Instead of having to click on each student and individually score those, you can click on several students knowing that they're going to receive the same rubric score, click on assess, and then when you assess that rubric and submit, all of those students will get that evaluation. should work the same. Mm -hmm. And as you start working on your individual department rubrics and all, if you should want to create an assignment that really needs to go out to all the courses in that department, then it would be easy for us to copy that to every course that you ask so that it doesn't have to be recreated. Okay? Any questions? One other thing I want to go over is creating a new assignment. So if you'll go back into one of your courses and click on the assignments, it looks a little bit different at this point. I think the new button was there where it's create right now. There are fewer things to fill in in the new assignment. You've got to fill in the title, fill in the description. Um, I just sort of leave it on the default settings for allowing files to be submitted. If you want to attach a rubric, you, you do it in the same exact way as you did before. Um, you can allow students to retract the submission. Notice it defaults to that, which I think is good because if a student submits you something early and then they realize, oh, I didn't, I didn't do a certain piece then you don't have to do the resubmission. They can re, uh, click on, on resubmit themselves. So it saves you from having to go in and allow them to do that. If you want other assessors to be involved in the scoring, you can click there. Down at the very bottom on availability, you have to click on show more in order to put a due date there. You can tell it to post it now or post it two weeks from now, whatever, but that is in that last section. And basically, that's all that's on the default screen. So that's how easy it is to set up a new assignment um, if you want to, to do that or as you do that. That could be another professional development that we provide, especially in this new environment. Another thing, one other thing that I want to caution you that we've talked about before, when you click on your courses, any one course, you've got this course overview. If you click on edit, you can add resources here, like live text documents or Word documents or PDFs. The only problem with adding a lot of stuff on this screen is they do not copy over from course to course. And I've seen several professors do an excellent job of adding all these resources here and then they have to re-add them again next semester. My suggestion there is create you an assignment inside your course and call it resources and add all of those documents to it. That way, next semester when you copy things over, you've got your resources there. Okay, any questions about that? <clears throat> 